What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is June 16th of 2022. Well folks, I hope you're hanging in there wherever you are. I know it's been a rough period over the past week and really just over the past few weeks in the market, but I want to spend some time today to really speak to the macro environment and my thoughts on crypto markets. As we've revisited back down to $20,000 for Bitcoin's price, Ethereum near $10,040. And on top of that as well, the Federal Reserve increasing the federal funds rate by 75 basis points. I think it's time we have a big picture conversation. We set our expectations at a rational level and talk about whether or not now is really the time to go absolutely all in, or if it's an area where perhaps we want to hold off or maybe in the middle, start to slowly dollar cost average and set long term expectations. We've got a lot of things to dive into, guys. I hope this video will be proven valuable for you guys. And if you like it, consider dropping a like down below. It's a great way to support the channel. All right, let's go ahead and hop into the conversation here. Now, yesterday, the Federal Reserve did something that it hasn't done since 1994, and that's increased the federal funds rate by 75 basis points. This is the most aggressive hike in nearly three decades that the Federal Reserve is engaged in. And many people are estimating that by the end of the year, we should be around somewhere around 3.4 to 3.5% when it comes to the federal funds rate, a major increase in the base cost of capital within the economy. Now, this has a ripple effect, which we'll talk about later on, on things like mortgage rates, as well as a whole range of different growth factors in the economy. But I want to, again, just talk a little bit about the market's reaction here from yesterday. As the Federal Reserve came out and announced what I think many people had predicted, which was a 75 basis point or 0.75% increase on the actual federal funds rate up towards 1.75%, what we've seen here is generally neutral reactions. Initially, some gains here in Bitcoin's price faded down temporarily. Same goes here for the ETH to BTC ratio, a little bit up from the announcement, but again, generally within the range that we've been trading in for the last week here. And again, just like we've been seeing in the correlation between Bitcoin and equities, Federal Reserve announcement popped up equities a little bit here, but now we're back down to pretty much where we were during the announcement. Now. This is not coming to surprise at all because most of the market had expected this increase in the interest rate. All the while, it's dramatic. Markets had effectively priced it in. The news had gotten out for some time. But we also are expecting further interest rate hikes. We're seeing the Fed actually acting hawkish, even more hawkish than they did back in the 70s when there was inflation previously, this kind of wave of inflation uh, near upper single digit, double digit territory for inflation. So. Why is this important to understand here when it comes to crypto? Because all the while here, crypto prices have dropped down dramatically. We are down near towards Bitcoin's previous all time high back during 2017. All the while, the ETH to BTC ratio has gone through a really healthy correction here of around 36% against Bitcoin and is still hovering near around that discount range. I want to emphasize why it is that I wouldn't go absolutely all in here. And it's the same reason why we didn't champion to go absolutely all in at 30K or any other ranges. We've talked more and more about how price is growingly getting towards a range where we can comfortably dollar cost average. But dollar cost averaging isn't putting everything in at once. It's slowly taking capital that you have or part of your passive income that you have. If you have any disposable income, slowly averaging in. And the lower we go here, I would say more and more confidently we can get heavier into those positions. But Again, I want to talk about why I wouldn't go all in at these prices. Okay, so with the Federal Reserve effectively being forced to raise interest rates and effectively reverse its previous patterns of monetary stimulus and go towards quantitative tightening due to the increase in the base interest rate, excuse me, the inflation rate year over year in the United States, this is a very telltale sign about what the Fed is trying to do. Okay. Now we can see here as the Federal Reserve is increasing interest rates, they're effectively trying to curb inflation. And the reason why the Federal Reserve has to do this is because all the while when it comes to inflation, there are two dynamics that are really driving it. There is increased demand post pandemic as people have made a ton of money in financial markets and they wanna go spend it now. They've been locked up for two years and now they wanna go out in the real world economy and they'll buy things, they wanna experience things. So the demand for goods and services is going up. We also have a supply shortage because a lot of the oil and natural gas producers, which has been playing a big role in inflation, the energy cost, 
essentially has not been producing the same amount that we used to see. Not only have Western producers in the United States not produced at the levels they used to because of the previous heavy decline in oil and natural gas we saw back over the last decade, but on top of that as well with the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, this has sparked even more concerns in uh, more Western uh, markets like Europe, for example, where I can say firsthand here as I'm in Europe, the cost of natural gas and oil has just gotten even more exacerbated, even more than it is in the US. So there are these big two factors that are driving a lot of political pressure across the world and pressure on our wallets essentially. The cost of goods and services are going up because of this commodity shortage. And there's not just oil and natural gas, there's other commodities as well, like wheat and soy and a lot of other things that are starting to, again, put emphasis on the cost of many goods and services that we consume every day. But taking a step back here though, the Federal Reserve cannot touch the supply side of the economy. They can cool down demand. And that's effectively what the Fed is doing because if we take a look at what's been playing a big role here, right? We need to really understand if the Fed wants to tame inflation, we need to understand essentially what makes up the majority of this inflation. And while the cost of everything has generally been going up here, there's no doubt about that, there is one key chart that everyone should keep on their radar. And that is the cost of crude oil. Now, I would put natural gas as a second close as well, a second favorite of mine. And I think that understanding where oil's price is going is the essential chart we need to keep an eye on if we want to understand when Bitcoin is actually going to go up. Now, it's not to say that Bitcoin couldn't recover and it couldn't do well in an inflationary environment and trend up alongside oil for that matter. But I would say more likely than not, at least here in the short term, over the preceding months, the next year, we need to see a cool down in oil's price here. Because right now, whether we like it or not, whether we, we see Bitcoin potentially serving as a hedge in this case, similar to how gold was back in the 70s during inflationary periods, right now, Bitcoin is trading alongside equities. And the fact of the matter is here is that as long as oil is really starting to break into territory where it's starting to cost the average consumer and take more of our disposable income that we now need for our everyday living rather than having it for disposable purposes like investing, assets are not going to appreciate as much. And in fact, people are going to do the opposite. They're going to sell assets into cash so they can go out and spend it in the real world economy and still fulfill the demand they want, right? This is the reason here why we're seeing so much pressure. It is energy prices that are really accelerating the cost of living here. Now, I do want to emphasize, we have started to see here what may be a potential top here in the market, right? We are, we've been hovering around this range here for the last uh, four months effectively since we got a really high acceleration here with an oil. And this is why actually in the Dash report we flipped neutral to oil and natural gas here as we are up in pretty heightened territory. But I don't want you all to think of that as me saying that we can't climb higher here. We have not seen a trend reversal here where we are bearish on oil and natural gas. And until we really see a nice monthly print of a 10% decline where month closes down red heavily, like we did back here, for example, um, during the correction back here in 2014, where we had a few consecutive smaller months where we saw a decline, a deviation from the trend or the blow off top here back in 2008. Until we see some kind of significant trend reversal that showcases on the macro environment that the supply is going to be increased or that the Federal Reserve has effectively reduced demand enough in the economy. They've effectively done what they say they're not trying to do, but they, they have to do, their hand is forced here. If they're not able to put the economy into a recession and cut demand manually through interest rates, right? then essentially this price is gonna to continue to accelerate here and it's just gonna make the cost of everyday living more and more harsh for everyday consumers. The Fed needs to force demand down through interest rates in order to cool these prices. Or we got to hope and pray that there's going to be some resolution between Russia and Ukraine, that more producers in the world from OPEC uh, to producers in the West and Canada and the United States are going to increase production. 
And it's not something, if you're betting on that supply side, that can happen overnight especially not in a war-torn area, that's for sure. But even in the US and Canada and many other pr producers across the world, they're not gonna be able to just accelerate straight into doing that. It takes a lot of time to start these projects, especially to do them right. So we need to understand that it's gonna probably take a little while before we see this rollover here. I think the earliest is a couple of months, even though we've been tracking higher here. Again, as you can see, back in the past, we can remain in this heightened range for a prolonged period of time. Don't expect it to happen right overnight. And we can see that it's, again, not just oil here. We've got a lot of other commodities that need to cool down here. Quarter by quarter here, we've either been relatively neutral in the sense of performance, slightly tracking higher, or really having double digit expansions here in the cost of general commodities quarter by quarter. And this is playing in directly into the CPI and the cost of living. So in order to understand where Bitcoin's going, we need to understand where energy prices are going as well. And until we see a trend reversal here, we are likely not going to see Bitcoin tracking higher. This is again, a really interesting chart that you can build yourself here by simply dividing um, the price of Bitcoin uh, by oil, essentially, we get a really interesting trend here, right? We can see here over time, that not only Bitcoin has been tracking lower here, but on top of that is when you divide it by oil, you really start to get a picture here, right? Until we start to see a traversal, a change here in the trajectory of these two commodities, an inverse move here where the trend inverses and starts climbing higher, we are not going to see Bitcoin substantially climb higher. And this not only goes for Bitcoin here, but it also goes for equity markets. Now again, it's been through a pretty harsh correction here, I'm not saying that we, we couldn't see some reversal here soon, but until we see a substantial uh, base out here, probably like we've done in the past, in order to actually start reverting that trend, then I wouldn't be too certain about going long on Bitcoin at this range, at least not all in. We have to wait until we see some kind of substantiation at this range, some kind of sideways support, not only for Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? Where we range sideways, we show that the bears have essentially been flushed out and market prices are ready to move higher. But on top of that as well, the commodity prices are ready to move lower. The people will once again have more disposable income, right? To be able to go out and invest in assets. It's the key metric that everyone needs to follow here when it comes to financial markets. Understanding that if there aren't any inflows in order to go into buying Bitcoin because the cost of oil and natural gas, the cost of living, people having less disposable income, asset prices will most likely not appreciate. And in fact, we'll likely see the opposite of what many people would expect. You're going to see people selling their assets, even at lower prices, in order to cover for the cost of living. It's this kind of death spiral only until the Federal Reserve does the hard decision. And I gotta be honest with you all, we've been a bit caught off guard about how the Fed has actually stuck to its word about raising interest rates. And I have to say, I'm very, very proud actually that the Fed is doing this because it's necessary. I care more than anything about everyday Main Street people. Yeah, I'd love Bitcoin to go up in price. Yeah, I'd love asset markets to keep climbing, especially if I'm invested in them, sure. But I'd rather the average everyday user, the average everyday person in the economy, essentially being able to get, in this case, better interest on their savings, have a lower cost of living, and be able to get by day by day. That sounds great to me, right? I don't want people being crippled by inflation because I promise you all, inflation not only hurts the everyday individual, it hurts even those who have money to essentially lose in financial markets or to hopefully gain over time. All right, it hits everyone. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind here. So as we're seeing Bitcoin's price start to kind of teeter out here, go a bit sideways over the last three days, all the while here, I love seeing the change out from the sell side pressure. Again, we're probably gonna go through another range like this. And we might see further downside from there, right? It's not somewhere where we wanna go all in here. Now, if we take a look here at Bookmap, again, this is a, I think spells out a really important point here that again, when we take a look at most of the futures markets here for these assets, it's important to understand that exchanges are hunting you out. Do not get caught using a lot of leverage at these ranges, especially not with some type of protection. 
understand if you are going to, that you have an understanding of where your liquidation price is, that you have additional collateral on standby. And to be completely candid with you guys, I would just say, don't even touch it. Don't touch it. And this is again why we've been emphasizing this so much, guys, because if you can, if you can effectively preserve your capital for when prices get down to exacerbated levels, like the ones we're at now, and if they continue to persist and go lower, this could be really a great opportunity for some of you out there who might have missed a lot of the previous cycles. Some of you who bought back at 40, 60 K to average in and be able to get in at a good price, All right? And if you can be disciplined about it, if you cannot get uh, essentially flushed out of the market and lose all that cash, right? And you know, not give it up to the exchanges who are trying to liquidate your bear mind. They know which levels to chase here. They have all the data to be able to do it. And they have the liquidity, bear in mind, to do it as well. If you don't allow them to force you out of the market, you'll do much better here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close off on some charts here. We have a new partner here on the channel, uh, which is CryptoQuant. And they're a data, pl data science platform. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of data science models, really helping to get a good perspective as to where we are now in the market. And one of the great models out there that I think has really been one that I've grown on over the past year or so is the net unrealized profit and loss or NUPL model. And this essentially is tracking on on-chain metrics when uh, a certain percentage of the market is under net unrealized profit or loss. Essentially back here during highs, we tend to get in this 75 to 80% range when markets are overheated. It's been slightly declining over time. But at the same time as well, we can see here when people are at a recorded loss on their positions on-chain we essentially see that price is bottoming out and then it therefore accelerates afterwards. And I think what's so telling about this chart, and I like the, the colored structure here, and you can just kind of see when we get in these blue territories, this is usually when accumulation makes sense. But there's a very important point I want to talk about here. That over time, not only are the highs, the expansions of this getting lower and lower, but on top of that as well, these lows are getting higher and higher here. We are seeing less long-term volatility, both in increases of price and in decreases of price for Bitcoin. So I always want to remind the bears here, yes, while we've gone through a substantial correction, much more than even I previously anticipated, at least at this kind of speed, right? And this price range, albeit. I want to make it very clear that we've now entered into this range here. And all the while the macro environment is scary, all the while we could stay down in this range and essentially at least range sideways at the bare minimum for the preceding months. We might be entering into a territory where it's better to be a long-term bull than a long-term bear. Just keep that in mind. Don't get caught too much in one direction with the momentum. I think one of the biggest things that we could have learned from you know, here on the channel, like complete humbleness here, right? We've made some great calls. We've also made some bad calls. And one of the biggest things that I learned from the past year is really making sure you think a year out, right? And this is where the macro perspective comes in handy so much, right? If we can sit back and think about, hey, you know, the market's doing great right now, but is there any reason why crypto could possibly go down. And in fact, if crypto is going to go down, should we be back in cash? Should we be exposed to commodities or things that are going to benefit from commodities, like a lot of the energy stocks, right? There's a whole range of things that we should constantly be thinking about. Thinking about the what ifs, right? What's going to happen a year out here? Because right now, I, I shouldn't be worried about really what price is doing now. I got to worry about where it's going to be a year out from now. That's who makes the most money, those who swing trade and really set up those uh, positions, right? Not even really thinking about it too much and stuff for about a year out, right? Not worrying about what price is doing on a day-to-day -day basis, but setting those long-term bets when no one is thinking about it. That's how we've essentially traded cryptocurrencies over the years. When no one was talking about crypto back in December 2018, we were covering it here on the channel. We were building positions. Right before the 2021, 2021 rally, we were talking about how central banks were printing a ton of money and how this would exacerbate the rallies for cryptocurrencies. And it did that. It took Bitcoin's price from 10K to $65,000 in just a matter of a few months. Not to mention all the craziness we saw in the altcoin market. 
you can not get caught too much behind on the trend and not come late to the party on a trend that's already exacerbated itself. And you start building positions, you can be patient, have a long-term time frame horizon, it will pay you forward. I can't emphasize it enough, guys. And to be honest with you all, with this decade of potential inflation we might be stepping into, it depends if the Fed really reacts sharply to this, this could be a very temporary wave of inflation. But, you know, overall, it, this is gonna be a decade where we should have moderate expectations for the performance of assets, at least until we see inflation stay down for a prolonged period of time. And that's gonna take probably about a year from now, just being realistic, all right? But again, that doesn't mean here that crypto, according to most models, similar here to the Palm multiple, right? Which is tracking a lot of the uh, income here as well from miners, the daily coin issued, right? We can see here that we are getting towards capitulation territory. Don't ignore these signs, guys. I can't emphasize it enough. And if you guys are interested, definitely check out the link down below in the description for CryptoQuant. Definitely consider checking it out. Try the free version. They've got a ton of great models on there that you can dive into, a lot of interesting uh, different ones. But what I really, really love about CryptoQuant here, and I think this is probably one of the, the interesting things that you guys can add into your uh, tool set, is tracking a lot of the custom community-based indicators and data science models here. I think there's a lot of interesting ones that you guys can keep an eye on here that are made by community members like yourselves. And I think it's, again, something that would be really interesting to consider for your tracking and investing within the financial markets. So if you guys are interested, again, check out the link down below in the description. But I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments what you all think about this conversation here. If you guys liked it, consider dropping a like and leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree. We'd love to get a conversation going. But until the next video, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. Stay strong. Hang in there. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.